And I'm sure that Cantonim has a full 45 minutes of delightful teaching for us. So why don't we turn it over to Cantonim, if that's all right, Rabbi? Absolutely. And I just want to say I'm thrilled that Cantor Jacob Nimi, for the summer, we have some new people in the class. So you might not have yet met uh, Cantor Jacob Nimi, who is a member of the synagogue and also a, a cantor in Wisconsin and in Madison, Wisconsin, and he's an active member of our class. And today he's gonna to be doing an entire class on various musical settings for Psalm 27. So we're thrilled. And so uh, Cantor Nimi, just so you know, we have some people who've joined the class since we started Psalm 27. So there are some new folks with us, which we're very happy to have. Wonderful. All right. So um, I'll just uh, need to get uh, screen sharing permission before we can begin. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Wonderful to be with you all today. I'm going to bring up a text in just a moment. I just wanted to say, first and foremost, we are only going to be able to like scratch the, the, the surface of the surface today. There are um, myriads of, of different musical settings of uh, Psalm 27, um, both uh, from you know, Jewish and Hebrew speaking songwriters and composers, as well as many, many, many uh, Christian composers, because uh, I'll, as I'll say in a moment, um, Psalm 27 is a regular part of uh, Christian liturgy as well. So um, let me bring up a first text. I wanted to start with something really contemporary, just to show that this is a text that people are, that songwriters of every generation are still turning over and over and over again. So we're going to come back to our um, the very tried and true, um, widely known CBST favorite setting of Achat Alti at the very end. But I wanted to start with something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum as far as a very contemporary setting. Let me see if I can pull it up here for us. Ah. OK, so we're going to share this screen. And. Where is it? There we go. Everyone see the text all right? Yes. yes. Wonderful. All right. So um, if you uh, uh, if you want to attempt to sing with me at some point, just make sure that you muted yourself. Otherwise, you're welcome to still just uh, listen. So this is by Chava Morel. She's a wonderful up and coming songwriter. Um, very involved in like Havana Shira and um, does collaboration with Josh Warshawski and the Rising Song Institute with Joey Weisenberg. So just a wonderful new up and coming songwriter. And this is her setting of Achat Sha'alti. Achat Sha'alti mei Adonai Achat Sha'alti Ota Avakesh Achat Sha'alti Mei Eit Adonai Achat Sha'alti Ota Avakesh Shifti Shifti
שאלתי מאת אדוני, אחת שאלתי to stop my share for the moment because I'm going to have to restart with a um, better sound uh, quality for video sharing. Um, but just again, that's to give you a sample of something that's very, very uh, contemporary. It was written actually, I think, um, last, last year, 2019. So um, just to show that these texts are really being turned over and over again. But now we're going to go all the way back to um, the most, uh, I want us to go into some of the most traditional forms of recitation of the text um, in a few different traditions. So I'm going to pull up, um, and at any point, uh, Harold, you know now from having been my TA a few times, I, do, I am not bothered by being interrupted. So if you see something salient or poignant, I will try to take breaths every now and then. So that right, I'm monitoring chat. Thank you. All right. So let me go ahead and bring this up here, but this time, and optimize for video sharing and sound. All right, great. So let's go to, ah, I know what I want to do here. There we go. So we're gonna start with um, several uh, Hebrew settings, uh, kind of like psalmody that we've spoken about a couple of times in this class. For those of us who are just joining us for, um, for Psalm 27, there are a variety of traditions of declaiming the entire uh, text of a psalm, uh, depending on when it's recited. It's, it, it might be attached to certain liturgies throughout the year, um, but psalmody is usually defined as a kind of a simple plain chant of the text um, that is somehow bound by the structure, the, the parallel structure of the biblical poetry in psalms. So let's listen first to uh, an Ashkenazi, that's a um, Eastern European uh, sample. David, Adonai, Yori, Vishim, Mira, Adonai, Moz, Chayai, Mifchad, Bikrov, Alai, Merim, Mechonet, Besar, Yitzrai, Bo, Yivai, Bi, Hema, Chashilu, Venafalu, Im, Tachani, Alai, Machane, Lo, Yira, Li, Bi, Im, Takum, Alai, Milchama, Vezot, Ani, Votach, אחת שאלתי מאת אדוני אותה אבקש שבתי בבית אדוני כל ימי חיי לחזות בנאום אדוני ולבקר בחלו כי צפינני בסוכו ביום רע יאסתירני בסתר אהלו בצור ירום ממני ואתה ירום ראשי הלא יבאי סביבותי ואזבחה ואהלו זבחי תרועה שירה ואזמירה לאדוני שמע אדוני כל יקרא וכונני וענני לך אמר ליבי בקשו פני את פניך אדוני אבקש אל תסתר פניך ממני, אל תטבע אף עבדך, עזרתי היית, אל תתשני ואל תעזבני, אלוהי אישי, כי אביבי מי עזבוני ואדוני יאספני. אורני אדוני דרכך, ונכני באורח משור למען שורריי, אל תתנני בנפש צרי, כי קמו בי עדי שקר ויפח חמאס. לולא האמנתי לראות בתו אדוני בארץ חיים, כבל אדוני חזק ויאמץ ליבך, וכבל אדוני. It took me a little bit to actually be able to keep up with his chanting. He was davening very quickly, which when you're davening a psalm or chanting a psalm for weekday worship, it makes sense that you might need to uh, get through a large amount of text in a relatively efficacious manner. But you saw he was really um, still clearly pronouncing and Absolutely. the words of the text and um, following the structure of the text as well. Mm -hmm. So let's... If there are no uh, initial questions, I'm going to show you another sample of something very similar, but just from a different uh, community. We're going to listen to, I think I want to go, we have a, a, a sample from a Moroccan community sung by Netanel Khain. Um, and so somebody, uh, I, I, there was a wonderful conversation, I think, that I saw on, on Facebook. I don't know if it was in the Facebook group or if it was on one of Rabbi Kleinbaum's posts about 
um, the extent to which Sephardi communities also recite Psalm 27, and if it's uh, at different times, perhaps, from when Ashkenazi communities do? I had posted that. You had um, posted that. Antilis and a few others, and actually have not gotten a specific answer yet back then. I saw a bunch of really interesting comments, I think, from Rabbi Reuven Greenwald, but not, you're right, not necessarily a clear answer. Um, in any case, Sephardi Jews do recite Psalm 27, even if for, I'm not an expert on, on their uh, specific liturgical practices, so I'm not 100% sure when. But I will say that the, um, the chant that I hear in this sounds very similar to like the, the basic psalm chant uh, in, in- In general, they do it, by the way, at Shachrit and Mincha, although the they is, as Cantor Nimi well knows, it's too big a word to say right. they because Sephardi has tremendous variety but they tend to do it, uh, certainly American Sephardic synagogues tend to do it in Shachrit and Mincha rather than Shachrit and Mariv, but there are then many different, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different things about it. Right, and the chant that you'll hear um, in this sample is also um, one that is not unique to, not unique to Elul. You would hear it if you were hearing Psalms chanted in the, uh, at other times of the year as well. It's kind of a, um, a um, general, this is Moroccan psalmody. All right, so let's listen to a little bit and I'll go, and I'll go back to the text. Great, I see that, I can go there quick. <laughs> I think we get the idea. We're not going to be able to necessarily listen to the full recitation. Yeah or the full so, length of all of these recordings. Cantor, just a couple of things. One is Yael Bat Hava says she's interested in the musical accompaniment. Oh, um, interesting. Uh, yes. Can you comment on that? Um, just to say that um, th that is clearly a, a studio recording as opposed to a recording of, um, you know, somebody who was just like doing it for learning purposes. That's something that probably would have been uh, produced and published in some way, shape or form. Um, and you'll hear that the, um, the style of accompaniment, I think that, that sounded to me like a string instrument um, that was underneath the voice, but that it was really following the melody line uh, and not as is typical with um, Western music and, and Western harmony bound kind of music where there's um, chords underneath rather in this style of music um, in psalmody. But I would also just say in general in, um, uh, North African, uh, Middle Eastern, and Balkan kind of uh, Sephardi chant um, that the it's the, uh, any accompaniment is usually something that's following the contour of the melodic line. Um, Thank you. Um, so a, a few other things. I, I promised everyone without asking you, can you send me the links to everything that you've played here so that people can go back and play it on their own and I'll email it to everybody. Is that okay, Cantor? I can, it'll take me, so the, these files here are um, what I can do, because they're all MP3 files, I'm happy to share. The other thing that I could do um, is, a lot of these are things that I pulled from, from YouTube or other websites. I could try to make a YouTube playlist to share with folks that would at least give you. We know you're very busy for the high holiday prep, whatever is easiest for you. I can do some of the homework, but I think people are fascinated with this and would like to go back either to a Dropbox or SoundCloud that you put up or YouTube. And also sure. people, we, I know you can't read, you cannot read the screen with what Cantor Nimi is looking at now. That's not important. It's just his, he's just 
picking up another recording. Don't worry about it. Yes, um, this is just where I'm storing all of my files. Right, and, and Cantor, does that Sephardic, does that Moroccan one, it sounds like to me music that I hear from the Middle East, including Muslim songs, music of the Arab countries. And, and that's not necessarily surprising because the fact is that Jewish music has always been um, both influenced and influencing of the host culture wherever those communities are located. So similarly, you'll find, uh, you know, German synagogues in, in Berlin are going to have some music where even though some of the modes of the melody might be um, similar to their Eastern European counterparts, the way that those melodies are clothed is in like a Lutheran style chorale. Okay, got it. Like that. So yeah. it's not, um, it's not particularly surprising that for Jews in North African uh, communities that their music will resonate with the style of the, the other music that surrounds them. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, I'll also say that the practice- I want to add to this, it's, uh, it's not dissimilar to foods, that Jews who live in different cultures absorb the cultural, uh, within a kosher context, absorb the cultural trappings of the foods in which they find themselves. So what we Eastern Jews, those of us who are from Eastern European Jewish, what we think of as Passover foods, bear no resemblance except for the matzah with what a Jew in North Africa or a Jew in um, India experiences their food. So culturally, we Jews have absolutely taken on and embraced the cultural expressions in, in the communities in which we've been located. It's part of what makes Judaism so much fun. Um, and also a very common practice in certain uh, Middle Eastern and North African Jewish communities. Um, I would say Jewish communities um, in historically uh, Muslim controlled uh, nations or, or, or regions um, is contrafactum, where they would actually, uh, for, for their congregational, for many congregational melodies, they would take melodies from popular um, Arabic folk songs, um, not religious folk songs, in sec popular secular Arabic folk songs, and apply them uh, if they fit the mode that that particular oh. text was supposed to be chanted in that part of the worship. Um, By the way, it was done we, with some of our melodies that our liturgical favorites were German drinking songs or Eastern European folk songs. Very, very common to be done. And yeah, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's nothing, exactly. There's nothing new. These kinds of that. practices um, are really widespread in religious communities of all faiths, actually, across uh, across the world. It's a very common practice. So. I'm gonna skip for now. There are a couple of other uh, straight chanted through um, versions of the text. I have one from uh, Jerusalem Sephardi and right. another that's uh, Central Yemenite and Iraqi, but I wanna make sure that we get to some of the um, uh, more uh, melodic as opposed to just chanted settings of text. So let's go to uh, a classic. Um, Go here. Uh, this is um, uh, Shuli Natan. It, it was a, a well, uh, widely known and popular um, Israeli singer. I think she was popular. She she had her heyday in like the in the eighties, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so this is a. a hard sometimes to find these kinds of recordings. It, I just happened to stumble across this. This is her setting of, I think, verse nine of Psalm 27 of Al-Tasteir, yep, Al-Tasteir Panecha Nimeni. So let's listen to a little bit of her. Fashel Hester Panim, Veshuli Natan Mevakeshet, Al-Tasteir Panecha Nimeni. Al 
again, we can't, we won't be able to listen to the full recordings of everything, but you get the idea that um, it actually is, resonates very uh, uh, strongly with that other, uh, the Achat Sha'alti setting that we'll be singing at the end. There seems to be a similar kind of um, emotion that the, the text evokes for uh, people who have uh, an Eastern European musical background um, where um, that this kind of approach to the text seems to, to resonate strongly. So we'll hear something similar at the, at the end, but a beautiful setting of, and a, and a very text oriented setting of the verse nine of Psalm 27. Um, so we're gonna come back. I wanna come back at some point to um, some of the psalmody traditions of other faiths. But before we do that, I wanna kind of do a little bit of a, a review of uh, um, a little bit of an overview of some of these Israeli settings and also some of these Hasidic settings. I want to say when I was starting to just try to look up some of these um, Hasidic and Eastern European settings of particular verses from tw Psalm 27, I was profoundly overwhelmed by the quantity and by the pervasiveness of like dance music that is like dance music settings of with like, you know, like heavy bass and drum um, settings of various verses of this psalm. So not my particular cup of tea, but a <laughs> particular audience. Um, if you want me to share some of those with you at another time, I'm happy to point you in that direction. But um, for me, they don't really... Um, they don't feel as connected to the text for me personally. So uh, let's go on to one of my favorite Israeli composers, um, Yonatan Razel. Uh, if you haven't encountered any of his music before, I would highly encourage you to look, look up some of his stuff. Um, he's really just a, a, phenomenal, um, a phenomenal writer of melody. He, his melodies are, um, intuitive and accessible, but at the same time um, have some complexity to them as well. Um, the only thing is that he's very, um, he doesn't publish his sheet music. It's very hard to find sheet music of his music. Um, so those of us who try to, who want to use his music in worship or perform it, um, have to rely on transcription, which is uh, a little bit uh, legal gray area, but the best that we can do. So here is his setting of spell his last name Cantor or -Z. Razel. So in Hebrew, it's Resh uh, Zion uh, Aleph Lamed. Right here, I'm hi I'll highlight the Hebrew word here. Here at least um, in English, you would probably spell it just R A Z E L. Okay, Tan Razel. Okay, thank you. Um, I. I'm a huge fan of his music. I, I use, he has a beautiful setting of um, Dror Yikra that's just stunning. Um, um, and Yiv um, Duet Hashem Basimcha is lovely and upbeat. So I would encourage you to go check that out. But here is his, he has two settings. Um, well, this is his setting of text from, I think verses nine and 10, if I'm not mistaken, of Psalm 27. Let's listen to a little bit of his performance. <laughs>
he wrote he wrote a very tuneful melody he decided to keep it going which is a beautiful thing to do um and with, we had all the time i would love to be able to listen to this in its entirety with you but um we'll listen to a couple of pieces in their entirety before oh, we finish uh, any questions harold i put a link you know i put a link to his youtube area in the chat wonderful there's a lot of youtube just some beautiful settings of a, a variety of texts. He also does, he also writes some of his own texts for music too, but he, he sets a lot of things um, in a really gorgeous way. So his setting of Katonti um, Mekol uh, HaChasadim, the, uh, the, the prayer that Jacob said before being reconciled with his brother Esau in Genesis is also stunning. Um, so let's go on. We'll, we'll listen to one of these kind of like pop, Hasidic kind of like pop settings. Um, I'm going to skip to. Um, hold on. Yaakov Schlecky. A very popular uh, singer and songwriter, musician among the David Hashem, Ori Benshi, Ori Benshi, Mimi Hira, Hashem Oz Hayai, Ai Mimi Efra, Ai Mimi Efra, Tim Tahane, Alai. Lo yira libi in takum alai alai milchama bezot ani poteya. He matched up a, a couple of verses from Psalm uh, 20, 27 with a verse from Psalm 23. Um, not an uncommon practice. Uh, I'm sorry, it's hard to hear you over the recording. Could you start? You said he put together verses from two different Psalms? Yes, so it seems that he's using verses from uh, the, the first two, I think the first two or three verses yeah. from Psalm 27, and then he moves to a verse from Psalm 23 Gam kie lech the gates al mavet loir arad. Even though I because the connection of the words of for, I, of whom will I be afraid? I won't be afraid from Psalm twenty seven, and then he takes a verse from Psalm twenty three that says I'm not going to be afraid. Right. This is by the way this uh, way of like bringing together verses from disparate psalms and biblical texts is a Jewish tradition that spans millennia. Many of our contemporary uh, PU team of our liturgical hymns are really these kind of mosaic structures of um, fragments of verses and phrases from psalms all over the place. So this idea of bringing two texts together that have a common message or theme or um, touch point textually is a very, um, well, he does it in a very new way. It's a very ancient practice. Kendra, I just want to give you a time check. It's 1030. So great. Thank you. As much as possible. Yes. Let's go ahead and hmm. Ah, okay. So we're going to actually go back to our settings here. Thank you for the time check. I appreciate it. Um, let's listen to Ule Heemanti. So this is, I just wanted to show that there are many, um, uh, particular verses that have been picked out by songwriters and set to music. Some, some try to set the whole psalm, some set specifically the beginning, the first couple of verses. Achat Sha'alti is, of course, a very popular text to set. Um, but there are many, many verses that are commonly set, including 
this setting of um, uh, trying to remember which verse is Lule He Emanti. I think it's the penultimate verse. Right. So this is by um, Avraham Rosenblum, sung by a, a popular um, a group, Lev Tahor. <laughs> So lovely settings of many different verses in this psalm, spanning um, a variety of different uh, communities and styles of music. Um, let's listen to, hmm, I think, hold on here. Um, so this is uh, a Breslov Hasidic melody that's being sung by the, the Razel family. And we'll just listen to a little bit of it. That's a that's a, a um, I think Breslov Hasidic melody. Um, all right, so I thought it might be nice to listen to a contemporary setting written by someone that the CBST community knows. Um, I think someone mentioned here that there's a lovely setting by um, by Cantor Dan Singer, um, who has. Then was he a Ryan, was he was he a, an intern at CBST at one point? He was our first cantorial intern Wonderful. in his final year of cantorial school before he went to uh, Stephen uh, Wise, where he has been the cantor ever since. But his final year in the cantorial school, he was our first cantorial intern. Wonderful. So this is his setting of Achat Sha'alti, and we'll we'll um, we'll play it and we'll look at the text and just see how he sets it. Um, I think it's it's really lovely too, and also again an example of a a, a very contemporary uh, setting by somebody who has a very intimate knowledge of the text. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just wanted to give him a chance to, to go through all of the text. It's a lovely recording. Um, I see that Adria has a hand raised. I'm happy to answer a question or... Um, yes, Adria. No, no, I just, I, coincidentally, I played that last week mm -hmm. and got in touch with Dan um, and he was thrilled and he just wanted me to say hello to everybody. <laughs> And oh, wonderful. Like many, like all of you, he's, you know, deep in the weeds for getting ready for the high holidays. But it's a beautiful, it's a, it worked beautiful. I thought it worked beautifully as a single viola line. And um, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's, it strikes me that it's a waltz, really. It's really a waltz tempo and a waltz feel. Um, Very much so. Yeah. But it's a beautiful melody that he crafted there for this. So, really, yeah, very lovely. And I agree, uh, it seems to lend itself very well to, uh, to string instruments. Can't everything, hurt. everything does. <laughs> sure, yes, Harold. There are some comments led by Yael in the, in the uh, chat, very rightly so, that we've had a lot of versions by men. Ah, yes. Well, no, the first one was by a woman. No, 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 that's true, yeah. the first one. No, that you're, you are absolutely right. Let's go ahead, actually, then, thank you for bringing that up. Let's go ahead and listen to a setting by um, by Daphna Rosenberg of Nava Tehila. Before you do that, just a second. One of the points that Yael is making is that anything that's going to be in the Orthodox vein, Hasidic or modern Orthodox, mostly is going to be done by men and only sung by men. They will not allow right. women's voices to be heard. So it's very rare to have a lot of these groups that do this a lot of the famous groups like the Maccabees that everybody loves, you'll notice it's all men because they won't have women singing with them. So this is, yeah. so Nava Tehila, which is the a group in Jerusalem, we sing many of their settings. They meet in the bottom of Kol Neshama. Um, and she came to CBST once and we had her do a workshop at CBST once with Yoel Sykes. Oh. They now charge a lot more money than they did in the early days, so. <laughs> Uh, we haven't had them recently, though. We'd love to have them back. But Daphna was at CBST and did a whole workshop on Jewish liturgical music. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful songwriter, as is wonderful. Bo um, and, and Yoel is also, even though they, they charge much more now, he is still a very humble guy. I, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't, by the way, I don't uh, begrudge it at all. We just couldn't afford them this, this year when they were here in town. We wanted sure. Them. Right, so here is Daphne's setting of, I think the second half of verse, or a, a section of verse four, uh, of that same Achat Sha'alti verse, but just focusing on a particular part of the verse. <laughs> give Kavo to her, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that we cover, there's a couple of settings I want to at least expose you all to snippets of uh, before we finish today. So we're going to listen to just a little bit of some Latin plain song, because I want to make sure that we acknowledge that this liturgy of Psalm 27 also 
exists within Christian liturgy and particularly within the Catholic Mass. It's uh, it's categorized as a I, I don't know exactly intro it, uh, which is like a, a psalm or antiphon that's recited as um, the approaching altar for the Eucharist. So this is a sample of um, that plain song approach to the Latin text. Oh, Just a very little bit. Um, the other thing that I would love to, to share with you all, um, a, another community in another part of the world who also um, decided to remain connected to one another through, um, through music and through making a virtual choir video. This is from a, uh, a church choir in Germany. I don't know exactly where, but it's from, um, uh, the denomination is um, a New Apostolic Church, which is actually neither Catholic nor uh, Protestant, um, but it's it's another break off from the Catholic Church, um, and this this is a uh, I tried to find where the origin of this melody is, but it just everything I found just said a well known German hymn melody. Um, so that's always the cop out, right? Just yeah, uh, right. Um, so you'll. You'll hear a very Hamish, uh, to, to borrow from a, a, a Jewish term for, to describe this, um, a, a very homey kind of approach to this. You'll also hear why it is, if I was going to pick one language that I would never want to try to do a virtual choir video to, it would be German, and you will hear why. Consonants. Um, let's listen to a little bit. chance to finish their phrase. I know that we are at our time. Um, I wanted just to say to y'all, there are so many more. I wanted to actually, I know that we are um, out of time. Uh, I heard the, uh, the, the comment about um, female songwriters and composers. I just wanted to share with you all that there is a lovely setting of English, an English interpretation of Psalm 27 verse 9 by Debbie Friedman, Don't Hide Your Face From Me. Yes. Um, that I would encourage you all to go find and listen. We've done that at CBST sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that this is why we have our Facebook page. Post a link to exactly. your favorite um, thing on YouTube and we will all listen to it. Please. So you're getting a lot of love in the uh, in the uh, comments. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Cantor Neiman. Thank you. I think it's, it's an incredible exposure of the range and uh, it's really a fun thing to do, to go to YouTube and just put in some of these words and see what you can find and explore it and try and ask yourself, what was the composer trying to accomplish? What was the feeling? What? And some, as Cantor Nimi pointed out, do the whole psalm, but many, many, many pick a phrase, a verse, maybe two, and sometimes not even that much. And the focus of that is always very moving to me. Thank you, thank you, Cantor Nimi.
Um, this is it's so so exciting when we get to do this little musical journey with you. Do you want to lead us out with some with a setting? Sure. Why don't we just sing through our um, our well known and and tried and true achat shaalti? Great. And I hope everybody's enjoying the CBST virtual choir version we've been playing on Friday nights and on Shabbat. All right. So let's bring up a text for us. It's going to be in the same window, but in a different here, over here. There we go. So it's the same PDF from before, but the Hebrew is the same. So. Um, and you'll notice I included the, the translation from, from CBST's Sidur, um, from Sidur B'chol Levav Chabalo. All right, make sure that Good, okay. Ah, 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 Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Cantor Nimi, so much. And blessings to you as you prepare for these days of awe. Oh, you're such a gift to all of us. We're so grateful to you. Thank, Thank you, me. everybody, for being here. And we'll be posting stuff, I imagine, on our, uh, on our Facebook group all day today. And it'll be really fun to listen to more of these in full as you have time to do. And we'll continue tomorrow with our study of Psalm 27.